Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching episode two of The Fall of the House of Usher. Good job. Yes. What did you think of the first episode? I loved it. Hooked immediately, like I'm so into it. I had really high expectations because I have loved every Mike Flanagan show that we've seen so far. Right. And I had only heard good things about this. We got a ton of recommendations for it. So I had high expectations and totally blew me away. Yeah, definitely love the first episode. There were so many good qualities to like, the scariness, the intriguing like detective trying to figure out the story aspect. Just the cast of characters seems ridiculous. And I'm sure we'll explore that throughout the series. So yeah, I mean, it's no shock. It's Mike Flanagan. So we're loving it and super excited for episode two. We have not looked up anything since the first episode. It hasn't been too long since we watched the first episode. Mm -hmm. So we still don't know who Perry is, technically. We are not any more aware of anything Edgar Allan Poe related, except for, I think we said Crow a few times. Oh yeah. And, and it should be Raven. Yes. The distinction between Crow and a Raven, I believe. Yeah. So I think it was just the confusion with Edgar Allan Poe, bro. Yeah, it like just that connection. sounds good. No, the connection. He wrote like a, a story or a poem or something called The Crow. Oh, I thought it was The Raven. No. <laughs> so that was my affiliation with The Crow, but I'm pretty sure that was a raven. Let us know <laughs> if it was a crow or a raven. <laughs> or you might have left a comment on the first one by the time that goes up. I'm sure by the time this episode goes up, it's been answered in the comments from the first yeah. episode. What is Edgar Allan Poe fuck with? Crows or ravens? Let us know. But loving it so far. Yeah. So excited for episode two. Yeah. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the episode. You all right? No. <laughs> Sounds damp. The camera? No, the water. Yeah. Oh. Finley. I read a story once about a guy who diddled dead bodies. Uh... Dang. I never heard of taking the body with them when they're done. I told you if I saw you again. I'm just leaving. Don't make me confiscate that camera. You can't. Oh, is this the lawyer? Du Dupin or something? Mm. Turns out there are multiple complaints about this drug trial. Five graves exhumed in the last four weeks, all people who were part of that drug trial. Oh, shit. The people in charge of making us healthy make us sick. This world needs changing. Dang. If you could catch them all and sit down across from it, what would you say? Was it ever going to be enough? He was so energetic back in the day. And your drugs, soccer moms. I forgot to adjust the monitor. Fuck. His mom could be right back there and we don't know. You marketed it non-addictive anyway because you wanted more. How much money would make you say, we did it? We are here to talk about... Oh. My son. Did you notice anything? I didn't. But he did turn a little. Yeah. Oh. Perry. You see something? Yep. Yep. Where? Over his left shoulder. Anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter at all. Not since I killed him. So he killed Perry? Well, the first thing you have to understand about my son is that he was, if nothing else, crazy. Oh, dang, Perry. <laughs> so that's the Perry's the youngest. Yeah, okay, so we were, the, we were right. Did you eat my fucking eggs? Oh, do you care they're fucking eggs? <laughs> They were Gull's eggs. You have to leave it in on the way to the hospital or else we'll just get worse. Dang, Perry, you are crazy. <laughs> Here they are. You almost killed the guy over eggs. Every kid in the family gets their nest egg investment. He makes it sound like a gift, but it's not. It's a fucking trick. Doesn't like my idea? Maybe we dodged a bullet. I feel like he's probably right. Yeah, but- This is my brother, Frederick. Oh. <laughs> What's this? A collection of condemned Fortunato testing facilities that are not compliant. Holy shit, we own all of these? Why are you here? We found evidence of buried toxins. We'll bring to code or we will demolish it as soon as possible. You've been saying that for a year. If this one is ours, I want to see it. It's perfect for this <laughs> idea I Can... had. Yeah, dude, you suck. You should die. You're supposed to be shadowing me. Shadows don't fucking talk and they don't fucking acknowledge the allegations. 
Yeah, I was like, why is he here? In doubt, you say, and we are aligned with you in our mutual <laughs> goal of compliance. Pretty easy. Seven. Six. Arthur has the power of six or seven attorneys. <laughs> I know you're the fucking mole. And you're only here because my father fucked a blackjack dealer on a yacht in Cannes 25 years ago. Dang. Fucking bastard. Oh. Is that some of the bird behind the back? We're throwing a party. Here. Oof. Tomorrow night, 100 people on the list. That's our first million. Sex and drugs are the theme. The orgy starts at midnight. He seems like he's Actually, good at numbers. If only he applied himself to something other than sex, drugs, and debauchery, he probably wouldn't have been the first to die. Also, throwing parties in toxic labs. Yeah. Oh. Damn, the fumes are getting to you already? Putting it in, she can still make it. Give her more adrenaline. No, what? No. Hey. Okay, adrenaline? <laughs> Product's not working. It's okay. Nothing about this is okay. If she lived, the whole trial would be poisoned. Human trials. How much longer is this going to take? The monkey's fine, right? It, yeah, it's, um... What? I need this viable in humans. Like six months. What? If my 200 million is coming up snake eyes, you'll tell me, right? I mean, yeah, of course. It's... Look at me. 200 million into this? Right now it's just killing monkeys. I'm not a fucking cartel. I can't supply your whole fucking rave. But you know people who move that kind of weight. What, you've been watching fucking Narcos or something? <laughs> Why the fuck do you need Viagra? Basically 80% come. <laughs> Dad doesn't believe me, and the rest just make fun of me. It's hard enough for the bastards, but it's harder for me for some reason. Like I'm the fucking bastard's bastard. Uh, dang. You're better than a dealer. You're smarter than a DJ. All right, this is beneath you. It does seem like way beneath him. But you're better than all of this. And the minute you figure that out, bruv, you're gonna be unstoppable. Wow. That's nice. Too bad he dies. Because I get the kind of performance anxiety that comes with a public orgy. I'm gonna get you some Viagra. <laughs> also, I have Viagra. I have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> His stallion reputation. <laughs> I was concerned this particular doctor was running a pill mill. See if you can find something. We may have to just find something. Create something? Somebody talked to the feds. They were really smart about it. The ushers aren't idiots, except Perry. Hey, they really do hate Perry. I also want to look at Juno, but there's something that stinks about Vic's clinical trial. What did she do to you? I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, speaking up? Never mind, forget I said anything. Oh. So you tap on the mask and it takes you to the payment page. That's not good. No. Turn on those sprinklers, make it rain. Nobody sucks or fucks until the rain starts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Something with these sprinklers. Yeah, I mean, they're planning to turn these on. Is everyone going to get electrocuted? What about the sprinklers? Those are dry. You guys saw those tanks on the roof when we walked in, yes? Because remember the golden rule. Whoever has the gold makes the... What? What a cut. Whole joke I told him once. Oh, wow. Remember the golden rule. It was in a comic uh... book. Oh, there is something, yeah. right? Yeah. I feel like that was closer than last time. And the cover. Oh, it's stout little king standing. Is it just Madeline or? Down. Oh no, that's no. fried. Whoever has the gold makes the. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my heart. Have you ever heard of catasol? Is it acid? Yeah. It causes symptoms very much like dementia, and even cause hallucinations. There's no cure, you know. Antipsychotics, the beta blockers, the stimulants, no thank you. Is this what he has? So really the only hope, an experimental new smart heart mesh that offers real-time diagnostics of major blood vessels in the brain. Oh, that's why he needed that heart. All of this really starts there, in that office with Rufus Griswold. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. I think what's ever in the tanks that they're gonna hook up to is obviously gonna fucking destroy him. Fuck dicks association. <laughs> Absolutely, T -t stupid fuck dicks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Roderick Usher, I have a presentation. Fuck me, is this is a pitch? Fuck it, you're here already, go ahead. When was the last time you had a headache? 
right now. Introduce you to Ligadone. No side effects, non-addictive. All of us, no pain. And this is the first pill in history for all of us. Dang. A world without pain. I like its presentation, a little box. Yeah. A world without pain. That was pretty good. But drugs, it's a dirty business. I'm cleaning up a huge mess as we speak. Oh. On the other side of all that. Medical devices, on the other hand. Now that's our bread and butter. Fortunato will be a miracle. And you will be the new messiah. Ooh. Messiah, you say? Of course, you'll, you'll make billions doing this, that's true. But that's not why you do it. I feel like he was so passionate about this. Yeah. Well? No. The most time I've spent with Annabelle. And you're seeing me at my best, that's for sure. It's okay. We know the struggle now. I mean, I know there's a connection for you there because of your mom. I guess your dad, too. Oh. You told her. Uh oh. Many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived the name of Annabelle Lee. Vomit. <laughs> Kids are healthy and happy. We're together. Money isn't everything. I like her. I know. How does this all go so bad? High tech, impressive. Madeline with your algorithms. Yeah, algorithms aren't high tech. They've been around since antiquity. Madeline, take the compliment. Rufus Griswold is going to help us go forward, or we're gonna go right through him. Yeah. Jesus, Madeline. Yeah, she's like all power. You get going, you get going. An AI approximation, but yeah, maybe. Oh, she really went with this. That thinks like you, talks like you. That's so cool. Mm. It's scary. It's Terminator. The ancients, they all wanted to live on after they died. Well, everybody does. Pick out the brains before mummification. A new piece for my immortality collection. Immortality. She is obsessed with living forever. I gotta look at Perry's bank statements. Do the Fed still pay in cash? The government was always cash in my day. What about the child bride? Child bride? Okay, we'll keep looking. We'll find them. Surprise, that's oh, a fuck. Oh. Come in, sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, that's his wife. It's not like it was like the uh, secretary. Grandma? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never again. I'll hate you. My two favorite women together in one room. You. Bond. They're like five years apart. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you meet my grandpa? A car accident. I was shattered. Whipped off the old leg. She only has one leg? Yeah, I think she had a prosthetic. Fucking love the pills. <laughs> I was just so grateful. I could just blow them and... There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bonding. <laughs> she was on an extreme amount of that drug, Ligodome? I'm throwing a party. Oh, that's tonight. a bad idea. It's very private. You should come. No, nothing, no. No one will ever find out. Don't entertain this. Without faces, without words, without judgment. Girl, you're gonna die. Yeah. I'm your brother's wife. And that's pretty fucking hot. No wonder everyone hates you, Perry. Probably don't want that going to your real phone, so I'll send it on this. Wait for a text or, I don't know, throw it away. I think she's gonna go. I think so too, but so was that the plan all along? Why he came here? Why did he show up? He had the folder. The I thought he was maybe delivering something. Does this work for you? Yeah, it's good. I so like is that the, better than the last one. It's a good color. Is the girl for him or for her or for both? Oh good, you got the clothes right. And I brought out a black teddy or red lace. This is what you're into? You work too hard. Let me pour you a glass of wine so you can relax. Okay. So is that supposed to be her? Like she wants to watch like from the outside, but it's supposed to be her? I think so. Like a younger version of herself? Yeah. We've got fillers into the staff at the testing facility. Nothing concrete yet. Damn it, Toby. Have they always been wearing kilts or skirts? I don't know if that's an official kilt. His name used to be right there on the sign before he got smart enough and took it down for something generic. Called it Rue Morgue. Oof. 
and we're thinking maybe there's an angle to play on the biological waste disposal. What are we doing here? There's a lot of sex in this. Yeah. <laughs> and not just like normal sex, like real kinky shit going on. Hey, you two. Hi, Ma. So I'm headed out. Oh my God. Nancy's feeling pretty rough, so the girls are gonna take her out and try and cheer her up. And don't worry, though, I won't be all night. You're going to that party? Wallets, purses, keys, no metal beyond this point. Man, they set this up quick. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a success. Yeah. What, it was 10,000 for the invite, 5,000 at the door, right? Yeah. Oh, that mask is not very effective. <laughs> you immediately spotted her. Look for people with the red glow sticks around their necks. They got the good shit. Try one of the bedrooms. We have 12 of them. You should feel very ashamed. Oh. Who's recording all of this? Her dad's a congressman. This guy, he's a draft pick. Are they trying to use this footage? This is the real business. Blackmail? I'm about to own Dick Wad. I mean, own him. No way. I'm about to fuck his entire world. Damn, if they found out that he was recording all of this, that's a lot of powerful people that you're... Uh-oh. Is this who you saw on the roof? Lady in red? I don't know. I thought the person on the roof was the redheaded sister, but obviously not. That seems so scary. But uh -oh. you never catch up. Well, you don't make it easy. So whoever this is doesn't really age. You can take off your mask, Prospero. I know everyone here. Beautiful flesh. Flesh? Sex. But with a dash of Rome, there's still time to stop it. Oh. Things like this have consequences. One of absolutely no importance. You were born. Damn. You are consequence, Mary. Jeez. We could have had fun, you and me. I've always liked the bad boys. Pretty little thing. She was gonna like fucking bite him or something. That's trippy. But it's like he's also on drugs, so. <laughs> it's not that trippy if you're on drugs. Oh. Closing the doors for the rain to come on. I feel like it's not water. Yeah, no, it's clearly gonna be toxic. That's some... Whatever's being investigated. Yeah, because the body that Roderick saw was Perry. Perry was all sorts of fucking, like, melted. Did she just control these guys? Yeah. Is she gonna get out or no? Go. 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 Listen to the devil. Go. Oh my god. Bye, everyone. This is gonna burn. And you're locked in here. Oh, just melting. Damn, that turned them into like goo. Look at the sounds. You beautiful boy. Ooh. That's so gross. But did she get out? The no, uh, the I wife? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because we didn't see her die, but we saw her walking in a certain direction. All right, so that was episode two of The Fall of the House of Usher. What'd you think? That was a lot. After the first episode and like going through all the children, and I think it was Haunting of Hill House, that we had a couple of episodes that were like based on the children. Yeah. I kind of had an assumption that this was also going to be like that. And considering that we had, I mean, they're all dead. 
I thought that's what we were gonna do. So this episode, obviously, we focused on Perry. Right. Yeah, I mean, that was just such a wild episode. Obviously, seeing like that jump scare of Perry there in the conversation with his dad and the detect. No. The, the lawyer. We'll just say lawyer. Dupin, I think. Dupin, Dupin. Dupin or something, yeah. It's D-U-P-I-N, but I don't know how to pronounce it yet. Yeah, I think they said it earlier, so we'll have to look. But that was just such a brutal way to die. And not only just him, like an entire room of people. Yeah, and it was not a, I guess, surprise. It was pretty well, like, telegraphed. Foreshadowed. Or foreshadowed or whatever. Like, because yeah. you saw his burnt up body. It's focused on like the rain. Yeah. It's talking about the toxic chemicals and waste at all of these places. Yeah. So it's like, it was very easy to add up. So it wasn't like shocking, but you knew at some point these people are gonna get melted. And that was disgusting, especially like the sound, like that was like a layer of melted flesh on the ground and just like their skin dripping off. Like- And the fact that people were like still alive yeah, like it wasn't even just him. Like you could hear the voices yeah. of other people struggling. Yeah. So that was just a brutal way to go. And I don't really know how to take it because Roderick said that he killed Perry. So it's like, is he saying he killed Perry because he didn't accept his proposal? So like if he would have, maybe he would have had oversight on like the business decisions and stuff. So it wasn't like, oh, I killed him because I didn't listen to him enough. Or was it, I killed him because I knowingly have all of this polluted chemicals. That one. You think it's that one? Yeah, that's what I'm going for because that is what this guy was investigating. Dupin or whatever? Right, like he's investigating his company. Yeah. So I think that this has more to do with the company versus like the father-son relationship. I'm gonna take it one step further though that did he kill his son because he sent that woman who I believe is like the devil, you know? You think he sent her? I. She showed up. Like why, why did she randomly show up for Perry in that moment? No, but it seemed to me like the conversation that she had with Perry, it seemed to me that she gave him the option to not do this. Yeah. So that's why I was like, did the dad send her and be like, give him an opportunity to get out of this. And if he doesn't listen to you, then he's not worth my time as a son. Nah. I'm throwing out wild allegations. Yeah, no, here. I, I'm not with you on that one. It just was weird that she, sh like, why did she show up for for him? And, and why is he taking blame for that son dying first specifically? There has to be some sort of connection more than just she randomly picked him first as the first child to die unless it's like age unless she's killing like the youngest to the oldest and maybe she'll kill what is it frederick frederick last because i think he's the oldest yeah so i just like what's the order of her killing and is there any sort of connection to well we Rodney? saw we saw the final funeral of three and it was I want to call her, I think, Samantha, because I think the actress's name is Samantha, the redhead. <laughs> the redhead, you're right. It was her. Oh, there was one guy, so maybe that was... Frederick. Frederick. And I don't remember who else. I don't remember. I just remember seeing her picture in the middle. So, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm really thinking that there's more connections there. Yeah. I could be wildly wrong. Yeah. But it was interesting, not only that she showed up for Perry, but that she did give him the opportunity to stop. And that she also did go to like the wife and was like, get out of here. But she went around to a couple of people, obviously. Yeah, but people were maybe hired. Mm -hmm. So like, were they innocent? Just oh, like people- they didn't choose to be there. They didn't choose to be there. So yeah. they, they didn't deserve the death because they weren't there for the debauchery. Yeah, I mean, potentially, yeah. And then because the wife is like part of this whole thing, they were giving her the opportunity to get out as well. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't think it's as far, but you know, who knows? Because I feel like with this story so far, like there's just so many wild things in here that it definitely could be something that crazy. Yeah. But I also want to take into consideration just being a human that you are also going to start taking 
like you're gonna feel a sense of responsibility for things as well. So Roderick might feel a sense of responsibility for his son's death and the kid's death, and it might not be as literal as you're making it. Right. And it might just be, you know, because I initially made this deal with the devil or whatever it is with that woman. Right. Um, in the night that they were there at the bar. I don't know how literal we're getting here or how deep rooted this is all gonna be, but the acid portion, toxic portion of that scene was just so disgusting at the end with those sounds, everything. I feel like all these deaths are gonna be so brutal. Yeah, if that's our first big death and it was that gruesome. Yeah, we did not change. We forgot to change the brightness, uh, the brightness <laughs> on the screen, but you could not miss him. No, it was filmed in a very creepy way. Also like the, whatever her name is, I'm gonna just keep calling her the devil for right now. Yeah. But like when she was just like all laid out in the bed and it was all red and stuff, it was like, that was immediate red flags. Like don't even enter that room. What are you doing? That was so scary. But I, I don't think she turned, he probably set up all the rooms like that. I, what a creepy dude. That was another thing is like, I was not expecting so much I can't think of the correct word, but like there was a lot of like sex and nudity in this. Yeah. And it was a little bit more, I guess, like extreme. It wasn't like two couples having sex. Like it was the redheaded sister who like is having this fantasy with her husband and having like younger prostitutes kind of match her hair color. Yeah, yeah. They said that she had a wig and then they were, she was, they were like role playing, but she was like watching. That's an interesting kink slash fantasy or whatever. Yeah. And then like the other sister who's like the PR lady or whatever she does. Yeah, she kind of had a relationship with her two assistants. Two assistants. I yeah. think her name's Kate something. Mike Flanagan's wife. Yeah. I'm sure he was filming and he was like, okay, stop. <laughs> we're not we're not going any further with you. <laughs> you you stay away. <laughs> Obviously with Perry and like his sexual exploits and then with Frederick's wife, like her like fantasies coming up to the surface, kind of, like. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We don't know if she ended up still in the room, but I mean, it didn't really seem that hard for Perry to be able to kind of tempt her. Out. Yeah, and I'm thinking of the funeral. That girl is there alone. She's sitting behind. That's true. So maybe maybe she was in there, yeah. she died. Okay, yeah, So you absolutely could be right. So it's just like, I wasn't expecting so much emphasis on like the depravity, like sexual, like craziness. Yeah, I just, for, you know, for, Netflix. Yeah, well, I mean, for Netflix, I, yeah. I'm sure, but also just for like any Mike Mike Flanagan stuff we've seen so far, I just wasn't expecting it. It's, yeah. I'm not saying it's bad yeah. or anything. It's just a direction that I was not anticipating. So I'll definitely be prepared for future episodes. Yeah, and the editing this for YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> the gore <laughs> and the nudity are gonna have to be heavily censored. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, now I'm like more curious, like, is it Mike Flanagan's doing, or is this Edgar Allan Poe's doing? Yeah, was Edgar Allan just a freak writing <laughs> these crazy stories in here where everyone's just banging? Because I mean, everyone, like even Rahul is his name in real life, but the guy, the only like brother who was kind of nice to Perry. Leo. I think it was Leo. I think I said Napoleon last time. No, 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 I think his name is Napoleon. Oh, and, and they call him they Leo. They call him Leo, okay, yeah. good. But even he was like, cheating on his boyfriend or a husband with a girl. Yeah. And he's, you know, has a reputation as a stallion. It's like everyone has very interesting sexual fantasies so far that we have explored. Yeah. And we're only two episodes in. Yeah. I also think it was maybe a little bit more of a clue that Roderick is dead already because he saw Perry in like that house. Uh -huh. And he said that he saw his mom in that house. Yeah. But the detective guy or whatever is not seeing them. No, yeah, he's not seeing anybody, but he's seeing Roderick. Maybe because Roderick is like choosing to be seen or something uh, or- All right, I don't I like know. That. It would make sense for him to finally confess to everything if he's already dead. Like I could, I could see him being like, all right, that's everything. Like in the very final episode. Oof. Yeah, I'd be like, you got me. Psych, I've been dead this whole time. Like you'll never be able to convict me. Uh, but he's getting the story out there. Yeah. Another thing is the flashback to young Roderick and his like pitch. Yes. He seemed like a good person. Yeah, it was very interesting. Obviously he seemed, I want to say he seems like a good person, but 
he knowingly is marketing this, like they said, as like a non-addictive drug and- Did he know that at that yeah, time that's though? Yeah, that's what I'm like, did he know when he was trying to push it? Cause I mean, anything kind of pain, like pain management, pain relief type of drugs, like I don't know how you could ever say that it's not addictive. Right, yeah. I mean, that's a, probably a crazy good feeling to not be able to feel pain. Exactly. And obviously, I mean, look at this, how this blossomed the relationship with Juno. <laughs> yeah, Juno was addicted to it. Yeah, so it's very interesting. I'm enjoying young Madeline and young Roderick. So I'm excited to see more of how this like empire came to be. Madeline definitely seems like cutthroat. Yeah, it's, it's Madeline who seems like the captain who's kind of steering the course of their future to just plow through any obstacle and be the number one house. Yes, and then I really liked, what was her name? Annabelle, I believe. I really liked her a lot. They have two kids there, so it was would have been Frederick and- The redhead sister. Yeah, so I mean, they seemed happy, and I mean, she, you know, they didn't seem to have a lot of money or anything like that yet. So I yeah. don't know. I'm interested to see how this plays out, but it seems like it's gonna be a Madeline thing. I think Madeline is gonna be the one pushing it because at least in that flashback, it seemed like Roderick had a genuine connection to wanting to free people of pain yeah. because of what their mom went through. Yeah. And he's like coming home and, you know, recognizing the kids, that's a small thing, but it's still a little detail. It's not like he's coming home pissed off at the kids screaming or anything. Yeah. And he's like, writes poetry to his wife and like, they were all lovey-dovey at the table and Madeline was like, vomit or whatever, she, whatever she puked or whatever she said. Yeah. But it seems like he's the good spirited one and not Madeline. So I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see how their story progresses yeah. to get to this point yeah. and what the hell is this connection with this evil woman. Yeah, and it seems this empire they're building, it's gotta be coming up kind of quickly because it seems like Frederick's been like brought up in this. He's obviously really young in that flashback, but I think this success is gonna come pretty early on because it seems like they're a pretty established company. Yeah. And that he grew up in it as like probably pretty wealthy. Right. So yeah, I'm really interested to see how this plays out. I'm really enjoying the different timelines yeah. of this. A ton of great actors in this as well and seeing a lot of people come back this episode, we got another Reacher actor. Yeah, two Reacher actors. Yeah, so I think that's my favorite part so far is the, just seeing the storyline from the different timelines. And I, there's two more things to hit on for me is the brief moment in the beginning with five corpses coming out of the ground, technically, that were all on that painkiller drug. Yes, yeah. The thing is, the mom was she refusing was, medicine. Right. But was she refusing it because yeah. No, the drug didn't the drug didn't exist yet. I don't know if it, it exi yeah. existed or whatever, but the mom wasn't taking anything. No, and then she still or I guess maybe she just wasn't dead. Maybe she wasn't necessarily resurrected. She maybe just wasn't dead. Right. Yeah. I don't really know. There's got to be some connection to that drug and people coming out of the ground. Yeah. But it could just be like a big cover up and it's the pharmaceutical company that's digging up these bodies because they don't want people going in and any testing. Yeah. Digging them up for yeah. testing. They're digging them up to dispose of them. Exactly. Could be. So that's a great. How supernatural is this going to get? <laughs> right. Yeah. Because yeah. it could be like you know, showing us this themes of like zombies and resurrection or whatever. And it literally is just a pharmaceutical company coming out here and being like, we got to get rid of these bodies. Yeah, because they were all part of that trial. So it's like, yeah, they were all taking the same drugs. Did they all come back from the dead? Or just, are they getting like massively sued, obviously? So it's like, don't let them have the opportunity to do like autopsies on these bodies. Right. Get rid of them. Right. And I feel like if anything, it might be more realistic yeah. and not supernatural. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep out throwing crazy supernatural theories, but I I believe it's probably a lot more based in realism and we're just going through this crazy story. Yeah, it's hard to tell. And I mean, even this episode, like, you know, we see, let's say the devil, she kind of like 
moves very quickly, like she's in like teleports almost. Yeah. But it's like if we're taking this from Perry's perspective, he is on drugs. So, so it's like right. But I mean clearly she doesn't look like she's aged a day. Right. Which you mentioned. So the last crazy theory. Okay. <laughs> something with the doctor. We know that in the first episode, Roderick met with the doctor and got some news that really threw him for a loop. Yes. But before that, because that was at the, it was like right before the dinner. Yeah. I can't remember what happened. No, no, the dinner was right after the trial. Like the first, when, yeah, they, when yeah. they were all together. Yeah. And then after that, shortly after that, he met with his daughter who was doing the cert, like the fake heart yeah. or something. So, so he needs that. So he needs that heart to something to do with like the heart and the valves creating dementia and like hallucinations or something. That's what he said, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, yeah. So this would like stop that. Right, or yeah, prevent it mm -hmm. from whatever progressing or something. So I think that's the news that he got that he was going to be affected by this or something, mm -hmm. or maybe he always has. So that's my theory is that he has this genetic disorder or something that makes him hallucinate. And not only did he find out that he has it, but that it's hereditary and all of his kids have it. So that's why all of his kids are maybe going to start hallucinating the same way the dad is. Mm. Okay, I like it. I you like, like it. You like that one? Yeah, I like that one. All right. <laughs> yeah. Because again- But are they even hallucinating or is like the devil really there? Right. Is the show going super, super yeah. crazy and it actually is the devil? Yeah. Or are they all just affected by a illness? Yes, yes, yes. And, there's... and what if he's like, oh, I am responsible for all my children's death because I gave them this gene. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Ah, uh, okay. He feels like responsible it. because he passed on his genetics yeah. and his problems to his children. So that's why he's saying he's to blame for all of their deaths because they're all going to die from this disease that makes them hallucinate and see this strange red woman. Right, which is probably also what his mom had then. Did you, why she was seeing things? Oh, I just imagine that they have the same. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, I don't know, but I mean, maybe his mom did and that's why she went and killed Longfellow. Yeah. So. Maybe the little devil was in her ear. You know, how, how she it. was like, yeah, get out of here. She was like, yeah, fuck him up or kill him. So there's, so many different directions that this can go. Yeah. And I'm positive we don't have the correct, <laughs> I'm positive we do not have the correct answer. Yeah, no, we don't know what we're talking about, but we're only two episodes in, so I think it's okay. But in another incredible episode, probably a little harder to edit, but I'm still loving this. I'm wondering who we're gonna touch on next yeah. after Perry. I feel like it's gonna give us a lot of clues depending on who the next death is. Yeah, if we are going like youngest to oldest or... Targeting specifically. Yeah. Because everyone thought it was Perry. Yeah. So Perry was the first one to go. So now yeah. is everyone going to pivot and be like, ooh, it's Frederick. And then Frederick dies. Yeah. Okay, enough crazy wild theories. This was great though. Obviously we're very much enjoying this show because we can talk about it for probably the length of whatever this edit's gonna be. Yeah. But always a good time with Mike Flanagan's shows. So I'm excited to watch the next episode. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.